the conditional mean function can be useful for both description and prediction. Here are just a few quick examples. So first, we can imagine our outcome variable is annual income for an individual. So dollars per year and x is whether or not they have a college degree. So again with that indicator function x equals 1 if they do otherwise x equals 0. And if we think about the slope in this case where we have a binary x the slope of the CMF beta 1 is interpreted as the difference in conditional mean between the x equals 1 and x equals 0 subpopulations, the college and the non-college subpopulations. So if we imagine, for example, uh, there were a 20 thousand dollar per year difference uh, then we could say something like on average having a college degree is associated with having a twenty thousand dollar per year higher annual income so in this case I'm not making any claim that this is the causal true effect of uh, going to college. Um, so we'll use that phrase associated with to make clear this is just a statistical relationship. Um, but it can be very useful to have these descriptive statistics about uh, income and education and things like that. Um, as a second example, Imagine our uh, y is now uh, let's say total net worth of an individual, and our x is indicator function of whether they are currently employed. So in this case, if we are interested in trying to predict net worth given uh, employment status and assume we have a quadratic loss function, so going back to that previous chapter where we talked about uh, optimal prediction, that was that L2 loss. Uh, where we take the prediction error and square it to quantify how bad our guess was. Um, in this case, uh, if we know x, then we would want to predict uh, a net worth of m of x to get our sort of we'll put best prediction where I put best in quotes uh, because of the usual caveats explained in the previous chapter on prediction um, that this is within the framework of uh, minimizing mean loss and also um, best does not necessarily mean it's a good prediction and also this is best given that we only know this one piece of information whether or not someone is employed. So if we could go get more x variables we could potentially do better. But given all those caveats the uh, conditional mean gives us the optimal prediction in this setting. So CMF or conditional means can be useful for both 
description and prediction. Uh, one case final example where it's not as useful. If we imagine uh, x is again whether someone is currently employed, so if they're employed now, and then y is indicator of whether they are employed next week. You can imagine we want to predict, given somebody's current employment status, uh, whether or not they'll be employed next week. Well, if we were to use the conditional mean in this case, uh, we would get some decimal value, right? If we compute things like in previous examples, we'll get you know, something like 0 0.86. Uh, so if for some reason we were using quadratic loss, like in the previous example, this would be helpful. Um, but probably it's not helpful to uh, say I'm going to predict a value of 0.86 for whether someone is employed next week. In some cases it might be if we just want a probability, but if we're trying to make just a hard yes or no prediction, um, this does not do what we want. But just a reminder, in the other two cases it did do what we want. So the conditional mean can be very useful.